Hey guys, welcome back to Bambi TV. Guys, we're going to be checking out an amazing video. It's going to be by Mufsi Mek. Christians worship Jesus. The afterlife. Mufsi Mek. Guys, let's get straight into this. And I I really feel we have to clarify some things. I hope he does it for us, guys. Let's get straight. Earlier, we're actually preparing in the wrong direction altogether because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the one who came to teach us. If we are to go against those teachings, we stand to lose. Similarly, if we take a look at the last part of that verse where Allah says, Wala yushrik bi ibadati rabbihi ahadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us about polytheism to worship besides Allah or with Allah some other deities. To have a belief in your heart that someone has one of the qualities or names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Someone is equivalent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in some way or another. The minute we believe that, we're losing. Why? Because Allah says, Wala yushrik. A person who, who is looking forward to meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not engage in any form of polytheism. And today we have a sickness. Sometimes when you talk about shirk, when you talk about association of partnership with Allah and the forms that it takes, people start saying, no, this person here is astray. They're not letting us do what we want. But wallahi, all our speech should rotate around. All our speech should rotate around the acts of worship we are engaging in. Are they correct? And who exactly are we worshiping? If I'm worshiping anyone besides my maker, I'm at loss. I haven't prepared for the day I'm going to die. Because when I die, the person whom I was worshiping, we will find that person in a similar pit sometimes. If that person was not a good person, and even if they were good, we would find them also in need of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take a look at the narration where... Uh, the messengers are made mention of on the day of Qiyamah when everyone will want help and they will be seeking some form of intercession. And they will go to the various messengers asking for help, some form of help. And each one of them will say, you know what? I'm concerned about myself. I'm worried about myself. Kullun yaqulu nafsi, nafsi. Each one will be saying, myself, I have my own deeds to worry about. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has it that way until we get to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he has been blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day to intercede of, on behalf of those who worshipped Allah alone and who tried their best but they may have a few deeds that, were, that they were not proud of or that would perhaps on the day of judgment be such that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be able to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that connection and in that regard. And from this, we understand two or three very important points. One is, right now and right here, who am I? I'm a worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not a worshipper of any messenger, nor am I a worshipper of any creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not a worshipper of any grave, nor am I a worshipper of a stick or a stone. I understand that I owe my allegiance to Allah. And I understand that I owe my allegiance to my maker, the one who made me. And I understand that I'm going to return to him. And I also know that he sent a messenger to teach us what is right and wrong, not so that we can worship the messenger. That's how the Christians faltered. What did they do? A messenger came to them in order to take them out of uh, the darkness and bring them to the light. And that messenger was Jesus, may peace be upon him, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And as time passed, they began to worship the messenger until they called him the God. Until whenever they were hurt or injured up to this day, whenever they want something meaningful, they first turn to the messenger, Jesus may peace be upon him. So the whole table has turned and everything has gone upside down. They were taught to worship Allah. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, quite clearly towards the end of Surah Al-Ma'idah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمَ أَأَنْتَ قُلْتَ لِلنَّاسِ اتَّخِذُونِي اتَّخِذُونِي وَأُمِّيَ إِلَهَيْنِ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ قَالَ سُبْحَانَكَ مَا يَكُونُ لِي أَنْ أَقُولَ مَا لَيْسَ لِي بِحَقَّ He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to Jesus, may peace be upon him, on that day, on the day of judgment, that, O oh Isa, did you tell these people to worship you and your mother besides Allah? And he will respond to say, no ways, glory be to you, all praise is due to you, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
How could I have told them something that I have no right to tell them? I told them to worship you alone. Subhanallah, without associating partners. So this is Isa alayhi salam, Jesus may peace be upon him on the day of judgment, disassociating himself from those who worshipped him. And he says, as, as the Quran says, that he will say on that particular day, I did not tell them to worship me, nor did I tell them to worship my mother. I told them to worship you alone, O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same applies to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says it quite clearly in the hadith towards the end of his life. لا تطروني كما أطرت النصار ابن مريم ولكن قولوا عبد الله ورسوله do not go beyond the limits with me, just like the Christians have gone beyond the limits with Jesus, may peace be upon him. Don't do that to me. This was his worry. It was his concern. So what did he say? He said, remember to say, Abdullahi wa Rasuluhu. The, the, I am the worshipper of Allah and his messenger. And this is why in Salah, when we fulfill our Salah, what do we say in that tashahud, in the last part of the prayer? We say, Subhanallah, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin kama sallayta ala Ibrahima wa ala ali Ibrahima innaka hamidun majid. We are asking Allah to send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the same way that he blessed the Prophet Abraham may peace be upon him. And we clearly say that he is a messenger, abduhu wa rasooluhu, that he is the messenger, he is abdullahi wa rasooluhu. When we call out the adhan, what is uttered? أشهد أن محمد رسول الله. Have you heard that? I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. We didn't say he's a part of Allah. He's the one whom we are supposed to be calling out to, you know, against Allah or besides Allah or together with Allah. No. So this is why the issue of intercession that I made mention of a few minutes ago is important. It is haq. It is the truth. Yes, he will definitely have the ability to intercede on behalf of those who have committed sin from amongst the ummah, on behalf of those who are from his ummah. So to qualify for the intercession, number one, you need to be from the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi Number two, Allah needs to approve it subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without the approval of Allah, no one will be able to be interceding or no one will be able to be interceded on behalf of and so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's approval is important. We read Ayatul Kursi, don't we? I'm sure the bulk of us, a lot of us would know it off by heart. In Ayatul Kursi, Allah says it quite clearly. مَن ذَا الَّذِي يَشْفَعُ عِنْدَهُ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِ But we don't know the meaning of that, so we are stuck. We read it, mashallah, for protection. It's important thrice in the morning, in the evening. We are taught to do that. So we want protection from shaitan. But we don't understand because we haven't looked at the meaning of it. Sometimes our acts of worship are contaminated. So the, the, that verse, Allah is telling us quite clearly that nobody can intercede on behalf of anyone else except with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why in another narration, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam makes it quite clear where he says that yes, I will see you at the pond, meaning in the akhirah, I will see you at a specific place. And the Prophet sallallahu speaks of the day of judgment and he says, I will recognize the members of my ummah. What will be the sign? How will I recognize them? You know, today you look at people and mashallah, uh, you can guess their nationality. And you can actually say, oh, my brother, do you come from the Philippines? And he will say, yes, I do. How do you know? Okay, it's written all over your face, mashallah. You know, you, mashallah, do you come, for example, from Nigeria? Yes, alhamdulillah. How do you know? Okay, it doesn't need a rocket scientist to know. But some, you won't know. Subhanallah, I could have given a million dollars to people to guess my nationality. People wouldn't have guessed. Well, now you know, mashallah. So the truth is, there is a sign through which Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will recognize the members of his ummah. Do you want to know what it is? I'd love him to recognize me and inshallah we hope he will and we hope he will recognize you. The hadith speaks of the washing of the places of wudu. When you make wudu, when you make your ablution so many times a day and the washing of those places of wudu subhanallah will create a shine. A shine on those beautiful places, mashallah. You know, I've washed the places of wudu. So the Prophet Sallallahu recognizes the people, you know, and as they are coming, there may be other means of recognizing that Allah will have blessed him with. But he will say, oh Allah, this is a, this is a man of my ummah. This is a person of my ummah, male or female. This is a person of my ummah. And he will 
ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them and Allah will forgive them subhanallah and they will be granted Jannah just like that that is the, that is if Allah allows that if Allah permits it each one individual then there will come a person whom the Prophet says ha, minni wa min ummati. this person is from me my ummah and he will be told not this one you don't know what this person has done after you left subhanallah he continued or she continued to turn their his back or her back against what you taught they did something totally different you taught one thing this person did something else and that will be an embarrassment and this is why the prophet sallallahu has warned us of this to say continue to strive you want the intercession of muhammad sallallahu you need to try you need to try hard you need to learn you need to use your time your effort your energy whatever allah has blessed you with to prepare for that day in conformity to what muhammad sallallahu has come with for example i have a lot of wealth a lot of wealth alhamdulillah if i have a lot of wealth how can i convert this temporary item i've been blessed with into a permanent item of the life after i need i want to convert it look i've got something temporary known as life this life it's very temporary it only lasts 70 years on average 60 to 70 years wallahi if this life was the only thing i had to enjoy it would have been far longer by the blessing of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's only 60 70 years if really this life was the only thing i had and if really allah wanted us to enjoy absolutely you know in this life do as you wish you only live once i'm sure you've heard that so many times yolo you know the youngsters say that a lot you only live once do as you wish as you want allah would have given us a minimum of a thousand years Trust me, the reason is, it would have been something Allah says, look, I've just made you for fun, just so that you can enjoy, go and have fun. You won't really get sick because you can enjoy. And you know what? He who has the biggest and greatest fun, he who can dance the best, he who can attract the opposite sex the most, and he who can, you know, really have the most in terms of wealth, whether he's got it by borrowing or stealing or whatever else, is, will be the happiest from amongst you. That's what would have been said. If this life was the only purpose, then that's what would have happened. But what proves to us that that is actually untrue is that we all know that life is temporary. 60, 70 years later, even Bill Gates will not be here. Subhanallah. Anyone else? Forget about Bill Gates. That's far. What about us? You know, today I received... Well, guys, we come to the end of the video. I can tell you this was amazing. The main version of Christians worshipping Jesus and Mary. I'll tell you that's true. A lot of Christians worship it blindly. There was a day I was talking with my brother's girlfriend and we were like, Yo, do you know, asked her, do you know that some Christians worship Jesus and claim he is God? And she was like, that's the mistake some Christians make. Like, I love when I talk, have conversation with some Christians that are it. And she was like, that's the mistake some Christians make to worship Jesus. That Jesus never said we should worship him. Well, Jesus said we should call him the same respect we are called to God. But she said that we don't pray to Jesus, we pray to God. And some people make that mistake a lot. That's really, really bad, guys. Like, it breaks my heart to see that some Christians actually do that. Like, it's not supposed to be so. Guys, I don't want to think about this video because I felt he imparted wisdom into my life, like, to be honest. Guys, just like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.